Good morning, Power Hitters. Today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. My name is Jarrett McAllister, your mentor and co-host, alongside my main man, Jonathan Bernasso. Howdy, partner. Howdy, y'all from Austin, Texas. Good morning. Good afternoon, actually, here now. Uh, it's great to be here. How's Idaho? Uh, it's cold, as you can see in this background behind me. Actually, though, it's a, it's not too bad. It's been pretty abnormally warm for this time of the year, from what I hear. Uh, haven't had a whole ton of snow, a little snow still on the ground. But yeah, man, we're, we're peaking high, you know, uh, high 30s, low 40s. So about to pull out the board shorts and the flip flops. Awesome. You have any recent success stories, Jared? You or your teammates? I'm hoping to have a success story here today, looking to close on a uh, on a deal that we've been pre presenting and competing with the past three weeks down to us and another company. So we'll get that. And I do have one success story though. Uh, as you know, I did share a deal in our mentor group. I was very low, underbid, undercut. Um, and the guy just wants pricing, pricing, pricing. But bottom line is, is I kind of shot down all those other offers and explained to him the red flags going on there and have a, a an appointment to present and kind of go over what we have to offer at two o'clock. So very cool. Getting an opportunity to present. Yeah. We'll start there. I'll share a quick success story. Uh, one of our teammates, Janice Vaughn, uh, Janice Whitaker, she's a mentor. She's in Texas here and she ran an advertisement and connected with some roofers. And so we were actually in a conference room after lunch yesterday with the roofers this guy owns one of the best roofing companies outside of Austin in Kyle, Texas, Good News Roofing. And he's there with his top sales rep. He's there with his new apprentice. He's there with his daughter. And they're excited to add solar because they're a roofer. And it's just so surreal being in Texas, meeting with a roofer in a conference room, wanting to add solar, wanting to partner with power, all because of an advertisement on like Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it was. Um, the possibilities here are endless. And one more success story. I, uh, I'm in, you, as you all know, I'm in Facebook community groups, Diamond Bar, Claremont, your local community group. And this guy found me, Robert Ochoa. He's pricing me against Tesla and all the rest. I gave him a cash deal. I'll probably make a thousand dollars on it, maybe 1200 bucks but he signed his cash contract last night after reviewing it for a few business days, all because I gave him a great deal with the best panels, REC, end phase, 30 year warranty. I wasn't the cheapest, but he wanted to go with a local community person and he loved the thousand dollar referral program. Uh, so you never know, you never know where you can get free leads and who is gonna sign up with you. Awesome, man, great job. Gracias. Uh, thanks, Keenan. Jenny Gonzalez, your first install was done. Do you want to tell us about that or anyone else want to share a success story? Yeah, I actually just um, onboarded in, let's see, because I went on vacation in September. So I started in October and it was my son that I, I'm actually a real estate agent too. And I sold him a house in January. And as soon as I got done with my onboarding, he was my first call. And he was say, he was paying almost $200 a month for his two bedroom, one bath home here in Southern California because it gets so hot. And we got him on the 18 month program at $36 a month. And he's just beyond happy right now. So um, now I have, an, I have a referral from him and then another referral from the person that I got referred from. So I'm excited. I love to hear that story, Jenny. Congratulations and welcome. What city are you in? I'm in Corona, California. Beautiful. Very cool. A lot of people around that area. Uh, yeah, I'm pushing, I'm pushing really hard in Corona. We have a lot of solar already. So when I'm going door knocking, I'm actually having to look to see if they have it for <laughs> because almost every other house has it. So I'm just trying to hit those homes. And even the ones that have solar, I'm hitting them saying, hey, do you like solar? Your solar. And they say, yeah. I said, Are, do you want the opportunity to earn a thousand bucks? telling people how much you like solar and that's working out as well. So 
Yeah, great. And some of those customers still have what's called a true up bill. They still owe money to the utility. So some of them might want 10 more panels. Um, yeah. Great. Can work, I give, can I, can I um, tell one thing that I found out that's really important is here in Southern California, I'm not sure if it's the same everywhere else, the new builds have to have solar on them. And I have one client that we've um, got a quote out for because they only put the basic system on there for a two bedroom, one bath house on a five bedroom, three bath house, 3000 square feet with a pool and she's got a Tesla. Wow. So her bill was atrocious and they had it on a lease. So that's something that I think needs to be discussed that we make sure that we, we talk to everybody about what these new construction companies are now doing um, with the solar that is now being mandated. That's the end of my speech today. <laughs> Jenny, you're gonna run the next training. Oh my goodness. A few months into the business, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that's, wow, very impressive. That's why I love to hear it. Thank you so much. Great job, Jenny. Way to grab the bull by the horns. Yeah. Let's do one or two more. Did Charles want to share or someone else? Scott's I got one. Friend. Yes, Scott. Um, <clears throat> so I'm good friends with the uh, gentleman here in town. Him and his wife own one of the largest window companies. Been doing business for 25 years. We've done business back and forth and sold in the last eight years. He knows this. I told him about this program, showed him the video, trying to get him to come on as enterprise. Uh, he's retiring. He doesn't want to do that. What he'd like to do, though, is give me his database of 6,000 happy customers to reach out with his blessing and his teamwork. He'll sign in. He's going to sign up, but he'll put everything in as a mentee. I'll close all the deals. He'll take half. I'll take half. Sounds like a good deal. So we tried the first one. A friend of his in Las Vegas closed it the same day, um, 18K system. And the customer is excited. He's a professor over in, uh, in uh, at the big college there in Las Vegas. Um, Doug is now putting together his database of customers. I'll now have 6,000 customers to call and say, hey, I'm working with Doug, who has an amazing reputation here in the Valley. And he would like to see if you would like to join us for solar. I'm now going to be making a lot of calls and a lot of very, very quality homeowners. So fantastic. Awesome, Scott. And I know your your teammate Tito is building a team and his team is closing deals and you guys are starting to kick butt there. Congratulations. It's, it's going to be amazing. Things are going spectacular. I just want to say real quick before Tammy will share, but we we have that that niche of like when a company has a database. Um, let me mute Charles real quick. When a company has a database, 600 clients, 1,000 clients, and they can earn 50%, and you can drip on them with maybe MailChimp or a CRM or an email or text, and you, you have the business approve it first, and then you send it out. I mean, that's an amazing opportunity. Anyone that has a database of clients to do co-branded material, use a CRM, drip on them with their permission. Um, I love that, Scott. Great stuff. All right, Tammy in Arizona, a green realtor. How are we doing? Hi. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Real, I'm a green realtor out here in Arizona, and we got some awesome news. The Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals has unanimously rejected SRP claims that the pricing structure that is highly anti-solar here, it's like one of the worst in the nation, and I happen to live in that utility, uh, they got zapped. So we'll see what the fallout is on that. Uh, so super excited about that. And we're also in the uh, throes of uh, elections for our SRP um, uh, board members. So I'm participating in that. That election's coming up in, in April. If anybody's here in Arizona, we need your support. And we also have some corporation candidates, awesome corporation commission candidates that I'm supporting. And then we have a fundraiser next week uh, for that. And we just need one more uh, pro solar a corporation commissioner, which we have some really strong candidates um, running. So anybody who wishes to get engaged here in Arizona, we have some great opportunity and it's life or death as far as literally, but it, the difference is one one vote, one board member uh, to, to uh, be able to have these uh, solar challenges um, overcome here. 
Right. Um, the, so anyway, but the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals was huge, huge news here in Arizona. So maybe <laughs> yeah. we've seen the light. Thanks for bringing that up, Tammy. I appreciate and, it. I waiting for a permit on a, on a, on an install too so <laughs> good better share those install pictures um yeah i appreciate the leadership and we have so many amazing women in power and we have people that care about fighting against the utilities the net metering in california has been put on hold thankfully um so yeah thanks for leading the way there all right let's keep it going ladies and gentlemen i know we have a lot more success stories out there but Thank you, Jarrett, for your leadership, an amazing mentor on the team. And just have one or two announcements here. Uh, so future trainings today, obviously we're gonna be talking about onboarding with a special guest from Power On. He does our onboarding. It's gonna be some great information to build a team and get up set for success. At 12 p.m. Pacific, there is Solar Sales Tuesday. Every Tuesday there's solar training for the whole uh, platform. So check that out, powercalendar.com. And then, as I mentioned, every Thursday, there is new consultant onboarding at 12 p.m. Pacific and 5 Pacific that we'll have Paul tell us about. But much, much more, ladies and gentlemen, on powercalendar.com. We have the Freedom Tour going on right now. So there's literally live in-person events across the country, across different states you could attend, you could build into invite people to. We are still thinking about a mentor factory, hopefully in Vegas around May. And then you definitely have to get your tickets for Power World. Uh, it's in person in Dallas, probably a 1500 person maximum, the 15th and 16th. And then we're gonna have much more Tuesday trainings as well. For those um, of you that haven't seen part of the Freedom Tour, it's on Power Calendar. I will be in Dallas this Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central doing a business presentation. And then Saturday, we have a free training, 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock with a ton of great leaders. So if you know anyone around Dallas, feel free to invite them to either of these two events and check out powercalendar.com for more information. All right, cool. So for those of you that are a little bit newer, every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, this team meets, everybody is welcome. We do some announcements. We do a great 20, 30 minute training. It changes every single week. And then when Paul is done here, I'll go ahead and let people know about some contests, a little bit about enterprise um, and a few more items before we hop off. So thanks again for joining. Today, we're gonna have a great training from Paul Rossano. Um, he leads the onboarding for power, power on every Thursday. He helps new people get onboarded. So he's gonna share a few slides about why onboarding is important, how we can set up new people for success. Also what to expect, what he talks about on his Thursday onboarding and maybe some new things that's gonna evolve with the power onboarding. So Paul, looking forward to it today. Let's go ahead and get you on and stage is yours. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan. Appreciate you having me and excited to be here with all of you. Share some uh, share some onboarding tips and tricks. So let me get set up with my slideshow and let's rock and roll. All right, cool. So like Jonathan said, I've been leading the onboarding training for power. We call it power on. We designed it back in July. So it's been about six months that I've been leading the onboarding training. And uh, we've gotten a lot of really great feedback about it. And uh, recently we're able to pull some data and we're showing that it's definitely effective. Uh, and we're looking at statistics, namely we're looking at what's the time to first contract? You know, So when new people join the platform, how quickly are they getting to a point where they're getting their first contract signed and getting paid, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's the name of the game is shortening that time as much as possible. Because we all know that when people first come in, the faster they get paid, the more likely they are to stick around and keep moving forward and keep building the business, right? If they don't get results for a certain period of time and, and it takes too long, most people are going to fall off. They're never going to do anything with it. So, uh, so we're really looking at how do we improve that? How do we shorten the time to first contract and get people paid as quickly as possible? And so that's what we've been working on. That's what we've been doing. And so I'm going to dive into exactly what that looks like, what we've created so far. 
And then what also there is for you to do, because we're doing a one hour training at this point, there's still a lot for you to do as the person who might have recruited or enrolled somebody to join your team to make sure they're getting the support that they need after power on. So that's what we're going to go into today. And um, let's dive on into it. So first of all, why is onboarding important? Well, obviously, you want to set your new people up for success, right? It's like when they come in, you want to make sure that they know what to do. And they know what how they're defining success as well. So you want to make sure they know the KPIs that you want to measure, which is obviously how many leads are they submitting, right? How many contracts are getting signed? How many of those are getting how many of those are getting to installation, right? So those are the KPIs that we want to measure. And I like to measure happy customers as well. I think that's an important KPI too. Hopefully you're all looking at that across the board and saying, okay, obviously we want to get the results. One of the results is happy customers, happy homeowners, right? So you want to make sure you're tracking that as well. And then how do they get the results quickly, right? So that's what we were just talking about. And obviously another thing why this is important, you want to reduce that churn rate. You know, the company is showing that we're kind of, we're kind of at a break even as people, you know, as new people are coming in an equal amount of people are leaving the platform. That's not a good thing, right? We want it to be growing. We want the amount of consultants, the amount of sellers on the platform to be growing and expanding. So we want to get past this point of an even exchange of in and out. And onboarding is a really important aspect to making sure that we're growing the total network and the total, total community here at Power. Um, there's also a lot of studies been done on the cost of acquisition versus the cost of retention. They've shown that the cost of acquisition of a new customer, you can think of a new consultant joining your team like a new customer, right? They're a new part of your team. The cost of acquisition is seven up to seven times higher than the cost of retention. So you're doing work to recruit somebody to bring them onto your team. You want to make sure you give them the experience and give them the tools that they need to get the results to make sure you retain that person on your team because otherwise you're just shooting yourself in the foot, right? And obviously we wanna solve for the lack of time. You know, the other studies and data that we've pulled at Power shows that the reason people are exiting the, the, by a vast majority, over 50% of the people that are exiting the platform are doing it because they don't have the time to get the results, right? So as a consultant, keep that in mind as you're bringing new people in to say, all right, how much time do they have to dedicate to, to this in the first place? And how do we make sure that they can get the results that they want in the time that they have, right? Or set some different expectations as far as results, given the amount of time that they can dedicate to this, right? So you want to solve for that problem. And if you've been around power for any amount of time, if you've been on any of the trainings, the masterclass immersives, the, the national conventions, you've heard Jonathan Budd talking about the first 15%. Now, this is a principle that was created by Edwards Deming who you can look him up. He's basically the guy that went over to Japan from the US and helped Toyota become the company that it is today. Toyota was on its way out and he came in with some new operations procedures and production procedures. And one of the key things for him is the first 15%. And basically in a nutshell, what it says is if you nail the first 15% of any process, the chances and likelihood of success drastically improve. All right, so you want to look at what is the first 15% of the experience that a new consultant or a new seller is having when you recruit them to join your team, right? And you want to create the best first 15% possible for them to ensure their success and make sure they continue on. All right, so then obviously we created Power On, right? The onboarding training, which is what we've been doing for the last six months with all the new consultants that come in. And I'm going to take you all through a really shortened, abridged version of Power On. So this way you could just get a sense of what it is and what the process is that we're taking your people through. So you know when you send them there, you know what, what kind of experience they're gonna have and what kind of information that they're gonna be receiving, right? So, so when they come to Power On, this is the agenda that we take them through and um, just a few sections. We start with this section, clarity equals power. And what we do is we give them the My Power Business Plan. Now, if, all of, if you don't have this, I'd recommend bringing this into your own personal onboarding process they're getting this when they attend Power On. Um, you can get this obviously in the Power Back Office. And we're just having them look at a couple of sections of this business plan. We're not going through the entire thing with them. And essentially, we're just having them look at what's on page six and page seven, which is having them start to create some clarity on their why and their goals. And so, you know, we go into some more detail about why it's important to create this clarity, obviously for their why. And just so you know, in context, what I'm emphasizing on Power On 
is that they want to get clear on their why, because there will be challenges that come up, right? There's going to be obstacles that show up. There's going to be days where they don't just don't feel like doing what they have to do to build this business. And when they know their why, they're going to push through. They're going to figure out a way to keep moving forward, right? And we're encouraging them to come up with a level 10 out of 10 reason why, not like some surface, you know, nothing, something that's not too compelling. We want them to come up with the most compelling reason why they're doing this possible to make sure that they stick with it, to make sure that they see it through and actually accomplish their goals. And I'm going to, I'm going to circle back to this in a little bit as far as what's yours to do after power on but then obviously we want them to get clear on their goals as well and it's you know the old saying it's like you can't hit a target if you don't know what you're aiming at right so we want to make sure they're clear on their goals and again those are on page six and seven of the my power business plan so basically when they come to power on we're giving them three minutes to work on creating this clarity now obviously that's not a lot of time and i encourage them to go back and revisit this in their own time and complete the entire business plan so they can have all the clarity that they need to really set themselves up for success at the beginning of this journey. So when you're following up with them, I highly recommend that you ask them about their goals and ask them about their why and encourage them as well to fill out the rest of the business plan so they can have this clarity for themselves. And then so I have them share their goals and their why in the chat. And then I have one or two people unmute themselves during Power On to actually share with their voice and create somewhat of a declaration. And so it's an interactive type of training. It's not super inter interactive, but there are chances for them to speak up and ask questions and, and share some things. And this is one of the points where they get to do that. And so that's basically the clarity equals power section. So I say, okay, we just talked about the what and the why, right? So now let's talk about how. How are you gonna achieve these goals? How are you gonna accomplish what you're setting out to accomplish with power? And we have them taking small little actions during power on little three minute sections for them to actually get some work done and begin the process of building momentum, which this quote from Tony Robbins really is pointing to building momentum and the, and the importance of building momentum in business. So we give them a few minutes to kind of just get some work done. And really the key part, and I want you all to hear this really clearly. So everybody, please listen closely to what I'm about to say, because this is really the foundation of power on and it really should be the foundation of your process and what you're teaching people when you recruit them is this very simple process get it submit it and tag it so we're giving this to them we're repeating this over and over during power on so i encourage you all to adopt this and make sure you keep people focused on this process essentially we're telling them what there is for you to do to get results is generate leads right? You, you've got to just stay focused on generating leads and tagging your mentors on those leads and let the mentors do the heavy lifting for you. You get to earn while you learn with power. So if you're new to solar, now obviously look, at the end of the day, I'll bring this in later too. If you're dealing with a solar pro, an established solar pro, your process of onboarding them is going to be a little different than if it's a new person that's, you know, brand new to the industry, right? If it's a brand new person, obviously this is what there is for them to stay exclusively focused on until they're getting results, until they've got some deals done, until they can at least sell on their own is really stay focused on lead gen, right? So we go, the only aspect of lead gen that we go into is really having them make a list, making a list of people they know, their family, their friends, people, you know, colleagues, people they might've worked with in the past, so on and so forth. So this is the only training we're giving them as far as a lead gen strategy is make a list and then start reaching out to that list and engaging them in a conversation to get the electric bill, right? So we take them through a process. We have them start or continue to build their own pipeline or build their prospect list. And then we have them go through a process of uh, learning how to get the electric bill. These are the, these are videos by Charles Thompson. So we play these videos for them. They're real short videos. They're only three minutes each. These are available in their power back office as well. This particular video about getting the electric bill, and again, this is something to pay real close attention to for everybody here today. I really emphasize the importance of watching this video multiple times and studying it to master this process. Because this is a skill that if they develop this one skill, obviously they're setting themselves up for a very long-term and very lucrative career with power and in the solar industry. It's like if they can really learn and master this skill of having how to navigate conversations with homeowners to have them send over their electric bill so they can submit that lead and tag you as their mentor, 
then obviously that's the name of the game. That's what we want them to learn. And we want them to just master this skill before they really move on to, to too much else, right? So I encourage all of you too, when you're following up with your people after Power On is to remind them, this is what there is to do. Really focus on this and study this process. If you have any of your own tips and tricks for them to navigate these conversations with homeowners, I recommend you bring that into your training with them as well, right? Um, so that's basically what we take them through. And then we have them send, we give them a, a process Welcome. to send out one outreach message in one minute. So we basically give them some more training. We introduce them to the 10 pennies game. I don't know if you're all familiar with that game. I think Charles introduced it maybe six months ago, but basically the 10 pennies game, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's just like a fun gamified type of way for people to keep track of their productivity and keep themselves accountable to the activity that they're committed to. And so it's basically just moving a penny from, you know, one pocket or one side of their desk to another every time they reach out to somebody or every time they have a conversation with somebody. So we're introducing them to this. We're encouraging them to start playing it. I don't know if you guys as a team or any of you are playing this game, but just so you know, this is a part of the power on training. So if it is something that you're incorporating into your, into your daily processes, then remind them of this, get them on board with playing the 10 pennies game. And the coaching we give them as far as how to send an outreach message is keep it simple. Basically, what I tell them is the whole entire goal when you're reaching out to somebody is to get a response so that you can schedule a time to have a live conversation with that person, whether it's a phone call, a Zoom meeting or an in-person meeting. When you're reaching out to somebody, you want to keep it simple. And you want to just get a response and schedule a time to connect. So we, su we suggest sending something like what you see on the screen here. Hey, you popped in my mind. Hope all is well. Would love to reconnect. What does your schedule look like, right? So however you want to train them, if there's anything else you've found that works for you, I think this is a real important piece as far as setting people up for success and giving them confidence of, of what, the, what the strategy is and what the process is when they're reaching out to people on their list, right? and how to really get that conversation going. So basically at that point we say, all right, cool. We talked about the what, the why, and the how. And now let's talk about what's next. And then basically the next steps that we give them at the end of Power On is say, we say, number one, reach out and connect with your mentor or the person who referred you to the platform. And I'm real clear. I say, you know, that person who referred you, they may or may not be a quote unquote mentor on the platform, but you want to reach out to that person anyway. You want to make sure you connect with them. You want to find out how long have they been with power? What kind of results are they creating? You know, what's the team atmosphere like? And obviously you all have an incredible team that Jonathan is leading for all of you and Jared. And, you know, you've got a really incredible team atmosphere here. You want to make sure you bring them into that, right? Um, I also suggest to them to find out from their mentor or the person who referred them, do they have any systems in place? Do they have anything that they can share as far as, you know, different processes that they can tap into and things like that. And um, the next thing here is connect with power, right? So we encourage them to join Power Pioneers, the Facebook group, tell them about Power Calendar, that they can find all the different events that are happening there and make sure that they add them to their personal calendar if they want to attend something. And, um, and then we encourage them or invite them at least to join power.live. We tell them that this is power's training platform. It's 35 bucks a month. We tell them everything they get with it as far as the national conventions, the masterclass immersives and the, and the weekly masterminds. So we basically just a real soft invitation. If they really want to tap into all the training power has to offer, this is how they do it. So that's power on. That's basically what Power On is. And then I, I finish it essentially with saying, and, and just a reminder, this is what there is for you to focus on. You want to stay focused on this process of getting it, submitting it, and tagging it, and keep generating leads. That's how you're going to get the results. The more leads you submit, the more results you're going to get. At the end of the day, that's the name of the game, right? And just remind them that this is a golden opportunity. There's no doubt about it. It's been proven by all the people getting incredible results with the Power Platform. So the opportunity is very real. And the results they get is going to be in direct proportion to the effort that they apply. So just, you know, encouraging them to make a plan and make a schedule and to put as much effort into this as they possibly can. All right. So that's power on. So, you know, I don't know, Jonathan, if you want me to pause real quick and just see if there's any questions that anybody has at this point before I move on, you want me to just continue on and finish the presentation. We can take questions at the end. A uh, quick question. 
Pause. Great so far. Someone asked uh, the video that we should watch over and over getting the electric bill. Do, do we have a YouTube link for that maybe, or is it one of the older videos? Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, I do. You know what? Uh, okay. if, if you want, Jonathan, I don't have it handy right now, but I can send that to you if you want to share it with everybody later on. Okay, it's also great. in the power back office. It's part of the, it's part of the tier one. I think it's still part of the tier one certification. It was part of certification previously. I don't know if it's still part of the new certification process, but I can send you the link as well. Okay, great. I think we're good to keep going. Okay, cool. So all that being said, so really at the end of the day, what is yours to do? So when you recruit somebody onto your team, what's yours to do? And you know, what's, what can power handle for you? So essentially what's yours to do is obviously get them to, to complete certification, which is now called tier one certification. So make sure they get that done because that unlocks the platform for them so they can actually start submitting leads. Make sure they attend power on, you know, that's, that's our recommendation is that they come to power on, let them get that onboarding training, let us do that hour long presentation for them, and give them what they need to know so they can start getting results. And then obviously, what's yours to do is to follow up with them after they attend power on. And I'm going to go through a bunch of things here, what I recommend, what we recommend, as far as what to do when you follow up with them after power on. And I mentioned this earlier, one of the things is get clear and find out what their goals are, what their why is, and see if they have any questions at that point after they've attended Power On, right? Get clear on them about their lead gen strategy, all right? And you want to introduce them to the different strategies that exist, right? There's a bunch of different lead gen strategies that they can implore, and you want to really get a sense of like, what are their skill sets? What is really best suited for them as far as a lead gen strategy that they feel most confident with, most comfortable with, that they're actually going to do, right? The best lead gen strategy is one that they're actually going to do. So you want to, you know, you want to find out what actually makes sense for them and what feels like the best fit for them. So, you know, making their own list, reaching out to their personal network, other networking things, B&I. Chamber of Commerce, right? Do they want to use the ambassador program, social media marketing, door knocking? You know, you want to just get a sense and introduce them to what's possible and what different things they can implement to generate leads, right? So that's that's yours to do for sure. And then continuing on with that, I like to do a, a SWOT analysis. I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but it's basically strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? You want to get clear on all of this for them. Have them do this themselves. Share with you what they think their strengths are, their weaknesses are, what the opportunities are for them, and threats, like what might threaten them and, and be a threat to them actually putting the time and energy into this business, right? Do they have family obligations? Do they have any, you know, maybe health issues? Do they have, you know, stuff that, what, what can pull them away and take them away from committing and following through on this? You want to get clear on that so you can support them with avoiding those pitfalls, right? Any standard operating procedures that you have that you can recommend, right? So communication-wise. So how do they communicate with you? Is text message best? Is email best? Is a phone call best? Is Voxer best? Is WhatsApp best? You know, how is the best way to communicate with you? You know, as far as discovery call, are they doing the discovery call on their own? Or are you going to help them with the discovery call? Are you going to be part of that? I know different mentors have different ways that they approach that. So you want to make sure you're clear with them on what your process and your system is, right? Scheduling save, solar savings reports. How do they, this is important. How do they actually go about scheduling the solar savings report with you as their mentor? We know that they tag you in power. They tag the lead and they tag you as the mentor in power. But as far as actually knowing your schedule, knowing your availability, you want that to be as efficient as possible so that when they're with the homeowner, when they're there on the discovery call, they can easily schedule that solar savings report with you as their mentor and the homeowner and get that booked and scheduled as easily as possible. Any scripts you might have, any you know, email templates, text templates, phone scripts, those types of things. Can you give them all of that, right? Ongoing support. So, you know, what's what does ongoing support look like for projects, for trainings, for meetings like you all have here every week, for any systems you have in place? How are you going to create accountability with them too for their time and productivity goals, right? You want to find out again how much time are they dedicated to, to putting into this each week? What are their productivity goals? And how are you going to help them stay accountable to that, right? What systems do you have to follow up with them and keep them on track with their goals? It's also really important to set proper expectations with your people, right? 
obviously power is an incredible company and power has strengths and power has weaknesses, right? So for all of you that are seasoned, that are veterans with power, that have been around for a while, you want to just make sure you're setting proper expectations with people that are that are joining the platform so they can set proper expectations with homeowners when they're talking to them, right? You don't want people out there telling homeowners you're going to, you know, we're going to have this installed for you within 30 days because then that's obviously going to lead to possibly a very disappointed homeowner. It's not going to create a good experience for them. It's not going to create a good experience for your new consultant that just joined your team. So setting proper expectations is a real important part of this process. And then giving them some guidance and making sure that they really know how to navigate the power platform is really important. They know where the marketing materials are. They know, you know how to access their projects, Power University, the knowledge base, power.live. Just make sure they know how to navigate the platform. They know how to submit a lead, I think is, is, is most important there. And then the goal at the end of the day for all of you, the goal for onboarding is to create clarity. So... I like to say clarity is like the who, what, why, when, where, and how, right? So there's a lot of information out there. And there's also important, and listen closely, because this is a real problem as well, is that when people come on board, when people first join, if you're not holding their hand and making sure that they avoid all the pitfalls that could possibly pull them away and take their attention and take their time, and you're not keeping them really focused on the main thing that there is to do, which is generate leads, there are a lot of things that can pull their time and attention as far as training, as far as power university. They might, they might get stuck in a paralysis by analysis type of, a, type of a format, and it's up to you to support them and make sure they're moving forward and doing what needs to get done to create results, right? So clarity on what to do, but also clarity on what not to do. You want to make sure you set them up with that. Confidence, right? You want to create confidence for them. And people coming into a new business, a new company, there's a lot of uncertainty, right? So again, the training and the onboarding should create confidence and certainty for them, that they know what to do, keep it simple, keep them focused on the objective, and they know they can have confidence because they have you to lean on, and they know exactly how to reach you, they know how to, they know how to get in touch with you, and they know that they have the support behind them that they need, right? And then community and camaraderie, right? Community and camaraderie is key for people to feel like they belong to something, they're a part of something, and that they're, they're a part of the family, they're a part of the team, right? And again, what Jonathan has created here, what you all have created here with your team is incredible. So they get to plug into that. And then there's also the company, right? And make sure they're joining, you know, part of the power hours, if that's something you all are doing. The masterclass immersives, the national conventions. I put here freedom tour as well. If you have new people that just join your team and they're not in your local market, you can't meet up with them in person, Invite them to go to a freedom tour that is in their market or close by so they can meet the leaders of the company. They can meet Jonathan. They can meet Charles. They can meet Bobby, right? That's a really great thing to have them get plugged in, to have, you know, have some in-person contact and conversations and have them feel like they belong to something because they do, right? So um, that's at the end of the day. And again, just reminding you of this, something to consider. How are you going to adjust your onboarding process for people that are brand new to solar? versus people that are solar pros. And there's definitely some nuances there that you want to make sure you're aware of. So, so that's what I got. I know I went a little over time. I wanted to give you guys as much value as I could. And um, yeah, again, Jonathan, appreciate you having me, man. I'm happy to hang out and, uh, and answer any questions that anybody has as well. So. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I'm sure everyone that appreciates awesome. that. Yeah. You got it. My pleasure. Yeah, that, that was honestly great, Paul. I mean, I think I needed that the most uh, <laughs> personally. I mean, all great info for anyone building a team, onboarding tips, what you cover. I mean, it, it was great to hear all those things. Do we have any questions out there via text or anyone want to jump off mute? Uh, I have a question about the certification process. I brought on somebody new after they added new things to the certification process. And I'm wondering how long should it take? Because she told me she's been doing this for like 16 hours and I thought she should be done by now. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've heard. I'm actually going through it myself right now. So I can't speak to a, my own personal experience yet. I haven't got through the whole thing. I've only been doing it for about an hour. Um, what I've heard is that on average, it's taken people about five hours at this point. So I know we used to say two to three hours. 
Um, what Irene, I know you all know Irene Whalen. Uh, she's the one that's kind of, you know, leading the team on redesigning the certification process. She said it's on average taking people five to six hours. So that's what I've heard. Maybe I can. Okay, well, in. maybe she's going through the university then. <laughs> that's what I was yeah. trying to figure yeah. out. Thank you. Maybe. Chris, I, yeah. I was just going to chime in. Tier one certification, just to be able to come on the platform, tag a mentor. I had someone that finished that in two and a half to three hours. Um, it, apparently it's taken people a little bit longer, maybe if they're newer to solar or whatnot. And then tier two is where you can sell on your own, a hundred percent on your own. And that I believe is another certification. That one could be 20 hours. Um, and then tier three is the mentor that's helping other people. And that one is going to be an extensive training as well. So Charles, I believe and Jim and Irene are all designing new certifications, but we definitely need to get used to saying tier one, two, and three uh, moving forward. What tier does she need to go to before she can submit a bill? Because she has a bill ready to go. That, that's just tier one. Okay. That's okay, it. good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And there are seven modules in tier one certification, just so you know. So you can, you can ask her specifically how many modules did she go through? Because there's only seven that they have yeah. to go through. And just so y'all know, like at other solar companies, I've ever, always been at training is, is required. If you don't take a training, there was one I had to take that was six to eight hours. They shut off my access until I passed it. So like this, this is good. So to definitely flip it to a positive uh, thing. Okay. Any other questions, guys, for Paul before I do a few last announcements? Anybody want to jump off you? Hey, Paul. Larry. Hey, Paul. Larry, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hey, how are you? Great. How are you? Hey, that was wonderful. Um, I, I remember going on probably about four months ago. Have you pretty much kept it the, the consistently the same or, yeah. or is there, I mean, should I hop back on again? I mean, it's always good to have training, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's pretty much the same, you know, I'm making little tweaks here and there pretty much all the time, but the, the general flow and the format of power on is, is the same as it was from day one, essentially. Okay. Thank you. All right, Larry, you got it. James, do you have a question? Hi, Jonathan. Quick question. Uh, I may have overlooked it when I went through it, but where exactly in the office is power on? Uh, Powercalendar.com will show you that the power on onboarding live trainings that Paul does is every Thursday at 12 Pacific and five Pacific. And that's found on powercalendar.com. Is that right, Paul? Yep. You got it. Thursday at 12 and five Pacific. Excellent. Thank you. Pleasure. All righty, Paul. Well, we appreciate you being here. I'm going to do a few last minute announcements stop the recording and then uh, we'll do a, maybe a little more Q&A if whoever's around. So thank you so much, Paul. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me just keep going here. I want to share, uh, I believe I did in the chat already, but that tier one certification, I, I personally need to go in and do it. It's a brand new certification. I'll put the link here. So please, if you haven't taken this new certification tier one, I would definitely go in and check that out. Also, I'm using something a little bit antiquated, but it still generally solves the problem. Um, I have some steps to success. So it's just a Google doc that I've made here. I'll show you all real quick. Literally things like giving back or donations that we do here on the team, passing this tier one cert, attend a live onboarding, watch these videos. I believe one of these might be that Charles video, getting a bill, getting an appointment, close some deals with a mentor. We have a list of mentors here in this document. If you're a mentor and your name is not in that document, you can add it or let me know directly. Uh, that is this team's mentors. If you need a Texas mentor, a New Jersey, an Arizona, that is our list of mentors and uh, build a team, sell five deals. And then you can take a test to be a mentor nationwide coverage map. JC has a training every Monday. I have a training like this one every 
Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. We've got great videos. We've got some team marketing material, power marketing. We've got swag that you can order. If you're in California, your CSLB, power blog, business cards, some YouTube channels to subscribe to, and then a ton of just training videos. So this is just a very simple document that we share with anyone that joins that they can reference. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting a good one. And thank you, Paul, for sharing, getting the electric bill there in the chat. Definitely want to watch that a few times, like he mentioned. So those are two things that I always do. Um, of course, you want to schedule a call with that person before they do the onboarding. You want to schedule a call after. And then you probably want to do a 30, 60, 90 day follow up with that person as well. Put it on the calendar. Um, so we really set them up for success and reduce churn and all that good stuff. All right, a few last announcements here. Appreciate y'all sticking around. I haven't talked about this in a bit, um, so I wanna just hit on it real quickly. This team really supports, if you want to, two nonprofits. We support Prosperity Homes, which builds homes in Mexico. We have a contest going on right now that I'll talk about in just a second. And then we also support Give Power. So Give Power, build solar water farms across the world and they recommend forty dollars an install my here's a picture of a slide you could put in your homeowner slide deck letting your customers know every time you talk to a customer that we make donations to help people in other countries or we make donations to build homes um, power makes donations to plant trees and do so many other amazing things in the rainforest as well. So here's literally a link. And again, it's in the steps to success document where you can have slides to put in your homeowner slide deck. If you want to donate to give power, you want to donate to prosperity homes. We have team um, pages for those and you can really talk about it. It's a little bit of a differentiator too when your client knows that you're trying to build homes in Mexico and donate solar or build solar water farms and they get a donation every time you help somebody go solar. So if you're new here, I suggest you check that out. It's in the Getting Started Steps of Success document. All right, we have a contest going on, two contests. As mentioned before, Good Leap has a VIP retreat until the end of March. You get to go to Sacramento uh, fly up there, get treated up there, the best restaurants and hotels up there and hang out with Dustin from Goodly. So that is till the end of March. If you sell Goodly loans, whoever has the most can qualify. It's the top three sellers. And then something, of course, I'm very passionate about is building these homes here in Mexico on the left. We had the team out there and this is the work hard, play hard till the end of March. You can go out there, build a home, and then get wined and dined at one of the fanciest resorts in Guadalupe Valley at a winery. Jonathan Budd's going to be there, Charles Thompson, Jim Bunch, and up to 30 uh, sellers at power. So 25 sellers, you get points for selling a contract, if you mentor a deal, if you have someone join power under you, and if that person sells a deal during the contest period, you get a ton of points. And then if you're new here, if you've joined Power after January 1st, you too are available to try to win. There's five newbie passes. Um, all you have to do is sell five contracts and get five people to join Power. And you can qualify to possibly go to this contest. So 30 people, guys, they announced some winners on the CEO call at Power Live last week. We got a lot of people on the team that are going to be going down there building a home, hanging out, wine and dine, hanging out with Jonathan, but it's going to be super special. So let's do everything we can to get that 15 points and these five points here as well. A few more things. Virtual site surveys are freaking amazing from what I can tell. They are speeding up um, everything within power. Let me just copy this and paste this in the chat. You can actually apply to be a uh, virtual site surveyor. You can fill this out and then apply, and then they'll eventually ask you how many miles you're willing to drive. 
you can make money doing virtual site surveys. I think they said if you do like two a day for five days, you can make a thousand bucks a week helping this platform with virtual site surveys. So if you want to do that, apply there. Um, but they're really speeding up the whole entire process. There's an app that you can download here. So make sure to get familiar with that. Lots of training around that. And then just to tease this real quickly, Power Enterprise, I'm going to schedule Charles to train our team on Power Enterprise. This is huge. The ability to onboard and recruit an entire team, EPC, company, business, roofer, whatever, into Power. There are a lot of options for Tier 1 Enterprise or Tier 2 Enterprise. Instead of the $49 a month, it's $175 a month or $350 if they get approved for the pro version. So we're gonna do a separate training on that. Get with your leadership and mentor. I'm barely out here with Charles in Texas wrapping my head around this because there's a lot to know about enterprise and it's really gonna change the game. I just wanna paint a quick picture for all y'all. Imagine the day that power takes over all of the designs and virtual site surveys. A lot of jobs are gonna be done with virtual site surveys. A lot of us are gonna be surveying the jobs. It's gonna move straight into design that power oversees by the end of Q1. And then in half of the cities, we're submitting the permit online and the other half the installer is. That installer is just doing the install right away and getting it inspected. Then we take over interconnection and notice to proceed. So you have this brilliant faster process with more control and you have faster speeds, better communication, better project management. You've got Ethan Miller at the helm, the VP of SunPowers, our COO. He just brought over Chris Bunch, one of the heads of engineering and software from SunPower and Sunrun now in charge of our designs. We got this new guy, Joe Witt, that just joined us. He's in charge of build partners. He has the best installers and build partners across the country. We now have this brand new person in charge of the roofing, entire roofing department named Kristen who will be overseeing roofing and she's from, I believe, Sunrun. So we're getting the best of the best people. And now we have enterprise, the ability to onboard entire companies. Imagine in a year or two, maybe we start piloting a few commercial jobs in California, guys. I mean, it, it's wild when you really think about what we can accomplish and where we're headed here. And whoever gets ahead of it is going to really change their life and change many lives. Okay, two more things. Um, of course, we have the 12-month, 18-month, 36-month incentive until the end of March. So that's a rebate. That's an adder. It gets put into the cost of the project. So make sure if you want to offer that, go for it. I usually don't offer it, but a lot of people do. And then just as a reminder, Power World, um, July 15th and 16th, I better see all y'all in Dallas, the 15th and the 16th. We're gonna have so much fun. So make sure to get your tickets for that or go to power.live to get your ticket. Operations, I know we do have some challenges in certain parts of Texas and certain parts of Northern California. All solar companies are experiencing long wait times. Sunrun, I've heard, is four to six months. Freedom is multiple months. There's a lot of companies right now taking a long time. So the constructive feedback and patience is much appreciated. Leave a ticket for your project manager on a sold job. If they still don't respond, text and call them. You could email the PM and CC the ops manager. You could text or call the ops manager. You could use the chat. You could use the support line. You have a lot of resources. At other companies, you, you don't get assigned a project manager and ops manager you could text or call. You have to schedule a call or good luck getting a response in one week's time. Um, so just know that that's the process if you have needing help with any sold jobs. And that is really all we have for today. So again, we just want to give a big thank you to Paul Rossano with Power On, the onboarding department. Great training. I'm going to watch this again, take that tier one certification. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and stop this recording and do any last minute Q&A.